We're in Cashville, Missouri, where the bent rail boots are, are made, manufactured, and we have uh, the whole process laid out in front of us where the good people right here in the heartland of America are making this bent rail edition, which I think is stylish, looks good, and I'm excited about it. I know you we are. We are too, absolutely, and absolutely. As, as well as excited about some of the people in charge of this operation. Yeah. Let me introduce y'all to Francis Smith. Francis, Francis. plant manager. Good Glad to meet, to meet you. Francis is in charge of Rope's entire operation. We make a lot of handcraft adjusting boots. And what Francis has done this morning is laid out all the various components to go into making a pair of bent rail boots. We have 160 operators. Each one of them will touch a pair of boots at least one time. If you followed a, a boot through the system, it would take about 10 days. Uh, so I want Francis to kind of talk to you about some of the components that are out here and how we make boots. Uh, basically what you see on the table is all the components between hard counters, vamp linings, soles and heels and nails and stitch threads. And uh, these here are all put together operation by operation until we finish and make a complete boot. So every one of these components actually goes into that one boot right there? Correct. Wow. <laughs> how, how, many, a lot. How, how many stitches did you say? There are 24,000 stitches yeah. in a pair of boots. <laughs> and, and again, as I said, it's about 200 steps to make a pair of boots. Wow. That so is it's tremendous. It's very labor intensive and it's, it really is, it's an art. It's, it takes craftsmanship. To make a great pair of boots like these bent reps. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how all this comes together right here, but there's a couple of things I want to point out. Number one, on this table, this jumps out because it's just a cool name. I mean, you've got to love the Justin brand. And number two, we are in the heartland of America, right here in the middle of the USA. Justin Boots, handcrafted. That's what it's all about. I think you're going to enjoy our walk through the factory and how all this is put together. So let's get to it. Let's get to Absolutely. it. All right. Let's go. Guys, this is uh, where it all starts. This is the cutting process. This is Shelly, and she's been with Justin for 23 years. 23 years. 23 years. What Shelly does is take a hide, and she lays it out, and she cuts all the various components out of it. And as you can see, uh, this is an art. It would be very easy to automate this, but if we did that, we could never control the quality. So what Shelly does is she tries to ensure we get maximum utilization from each hide. At the same time, she cut around any weak spots or any stars and, and make sure that that quality is always first. Paul, this is where we stitch the uppers. These are uh, 12 head machines and uh, each, each machine can generate about 150 pair a day. Okay. Um, we have about 80 different program stitch patterns, all proprietary adjusting that, that we use. Some of them go back to the 1920s. 80 different patterns, 80 different patterns wow. are in here, yeah. So uh, it's amazing. We're working two shifts with all the machines you see back here. We can generate about 1,000 pairs a day Correct. off of these machines. Off oh, two shifts. Oh, two That's shifts. A lot, a lot of boots. And we're, we're pretty busy. Busy. You, you were telling me that you don't always run two shifts, but the demand for these Justin boots here lately has really stepped up, so you've had to have your employees even work some overtime here lately. Yeah, we had to really step up to get the production that we need to make these boots. Well, you got the crew to do it. Oh, I like them. Yeah. Paul, this is where we do the vamp and counter stitching. This is Gail. Gail's been here 24 years. And as you can see, this is a, a free floating machine. So there's no dies, there's no patterns. It's all done by eye hand coordination. And again, it's that, it's that artwork and that skills we've talked about in the handcraft of the pair of Justin boots. Francis, you want to tell us a little bit more about what she's doing and how this relates to this pair of boots? Well, Lewis, what, what she's doing, uh, we have this, we call this the quarter, we have the vamp, and we call this the counter. And uh, she's absolutely assembling the boot by sewing a two needle stitch, free-handed, as you said, to uh, attach the vamp to the quarter and the counter to the back quarter. Amazing process. You know, a common theme I'm picking up on is that people have uh, committed their lives to working for the Justin brand. They, they enjoy what they do. Gail's been here 24 years. You've been here for 30 years. 30 years. A lot of folks that have been here a long time. And then it's really a home-oriented company, and the people in this area just love working for Justin, and they're here. Well, you get that feeling when you walk in the factory. Definitely. Basically, to this point, we're going to make the boots inside out. And as we turn the tops, you'll see here in a second, when the boot really starts to take shape, and you can really see the craftsmanship. And then over here, we'll do the same thing. We'll pound the outside and really uh, flatten that out as well. This is where we add the J-Flex insole. It's a patented process that we own. 
and it is what uh, adds comfort, flexibility to every pair of just and handcrafted boots. Uh, it's what allows you to take a pair of boots off the shelf and do this. It's like we broke them in for you. You know, like customers walk in the store and they want instant gratification. That's it right there. It's the all factor. <laughs> all. Uh -huh. Justin, this is our freeze mold counterform operation. What the girl's doing here, and it, the boot has a thermal counter in the back of it, and she heats it, and then she moves it over to a cold mold, which freezes the shape of the back of the heel of your foot to make it fit tighter. Right. And of course, like we all know, a boot's got to have a little slippage in the heel. Right, but not but too much. Not too much for right. a wearing boot. But this is basically one of our new operations that uh, we do here to make the boot fit better. And another example of going above and beyond, a lot of boot companies may not go to this process. I'm Correct. Correct. All right, very interesting. This is where the boot really starts to take shape the specific toe profiles or sizes. And uh, Francis, you want to explain to us exactly what we're doing here? Guys, basically what we're doing here, we, we wet the boot down, and this is a plastic last, uh, which is the shape of your foot. And what he does after the boot's wet, he pulls it down with pliers and molds it to this so that when the moisture dries out of leather, it draws tight and makes a good tight-fitting boot. I find it interesting. I, I was looking at the old black and white pictures from years ago in this factory, and this is the same way they do it today as they did way back when. We haven't changed much in our boot making is really to make an authentic, hand-lasted, crafted boot for Justin. This is one of the ways we do it. If you got the best way to do it and good workers do it, there's no reason to change it. That's right. Paul, this is where we have the weld. Basically, this is what holds the entire boot together. Francis is going to show you how that all works. Basically, the guy's got an inseaming machine that feeds through, and he stitches the weld on, and we try to go to three to four inches of stitching it on to hold it on. We flip and trim the weld, and that attaches the sole, gives you something for your sole to attach to, which then lets your heel attach to it. Francis, it's finally starting to look like a boot. Look, are we getting close? We're getting closer. We're getting all close. Right. What's important here is, again, there's no dyes or patterns. Yep. It's all done by hand. There's a lot of experience, a lot of craftsmanship. Amazing. Amazing process. All right. Now, the shank, as you well know, is what gives the boot stability, arch support, to make sure that it treads properly so that when you set a boot down, it doesn't rock back and forth. It sits flat. Basically, what, what he's talking about here, we have a bottom filler that we put up in the toe of the boot, which gives you more comfortable cushion. Right. And we have the steel shank. Like he said, it's for arch support and for the treading of the boot to make the heel set flat. You know, when I was a kid, my folks, when they were buying boots for us, they wanted to make sure that it was a steel shank boot. Justin and Paul, this operation here, we call it rough rounding. It's basically we're trimming the excess outsole extension off of the boot. The soles we get in blockers uh, because of uh, the, all the width of the toes and the double stitch, so we have to trim that so the boys can outsole stitch it. So there's no stitching on there yet then? No stitching on the sole yet. It's basically put on with the hot cement, or not the cement, but it's contact cement, right. and it's heated to make it activate. And then, like I said, it's held in place there until we can get us the outsole stitch. Well, that's what I'm looking forward to. The outsole uh, stitches? That, yes, sir. That's an art. Uh, that's what I hear. Uh, Justin, this is the part you've been asking and waiting for. This is the stitching. Put the outsole on. So, these are the guys that you said it takes how long to train them? It takes a year to be able to stitch a good boot. That's unbelievable. You don't find these guys on, on every corner. They're not around here. <laughs> if they're out there, they're in here putting them. They're in the factory. Work. Right. I got to shake this guy's hand. As soon as he gets the knife out of that hand, you're the man. <laughs> Jess, I want you to notice how even all these stitches are, all the way around. All done by hand. I just assumed that a machine, when it got, when the boot got to this stage, a machine would be finishing it out like that. Not here. Not adjusting. Not adjusting. Well, this is the nailing and pegging process. Basically, it just gets dirt out and stabilizes the, the uh, shank. It looks easy. It but does it's look not. easy. I'd like to try it. Absolutely. Can you fix me up? We can fix you up, but you got to realize each boot takes 40 to 60 nails. 40 to 60. 40 to 60 nails. I got a question for you. How come you got the guy with the biggest fingers holding the smallest nails in the factory? I don't really have an answer. <laughs> he does. He can whip through them, though. Oh, he's fast. He's fast. All right, I'm going to get after him. All right. Try it. 
Don't make three dollars a day. <laughs> huh? Get better. Huh? Your, yeah. your partner's gone through three boots already. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no, no good. No good. No good. No. no. Good. no. Thanks, Luke. No. You didn't get him. Oh. This is Pat. He's been here 30 years with the company, and he's uh, our hero hill scour. What he is doing is we have all the excess on this boot. He has to trim at freehand sandpaper to get it at the pitch tree wall, which this area is running at 35 degrees. Kelvin. You were telling me this is a very difficult process. Very difficult, very difficult. Now he's got a gauge down there, a pitch gauge, but every one of them he measures is perfect because he's using his experience and his hands and his eyes. It's a, it's a feel. He's coordinated. He has yeah, hands and eyes. Around. 30 Thank years of it, he knows what it is here. Well, gentlemen, it's the final stage before packing. And uh, what she's doing here is inking the edges and staining the bottoms. We need to apply the oil and polish stuff and do that here. But this just finishes the boot off. It gives a great quality handcrafted look. Gives it that shelf of feel so yeah. I can sell lots of these. Absolutely. <laughs> what I want to know is, you think I can get him to work on mine before I get out of here? <laughs> I think they might do it, but you'll have to go sit down and take them off. Splash, uh, splash a little of that boot lotion on them. That's what I need. That's what you need. I'd like to just buy a new pair of boots. Hey, there you go. I know a good place where you can get a new <laughs> yeah, pair of boots. I thought you might. Absolutely. Guys, this is the final step before it goes to your store. He is extremely fast. It takes about, when she's absent, it takes a vacation day, it takes about three people to fill in for it. Unbelievable. These are the boxes that the customers are going to see in the store. Right, yeah. Lewis? Exactly. These were designed specifically for the Justin Bed Rail Collection, and uh, that's what they need to look for. Absolutely. Hey, if you're not doing anything around Christmas time, could you come help me wrap presents in my house? Well, Paul and Justin, thank y'all so much for taking the time to come by and spend the afternoon with us. I hope uh, you and our viewers have learned a lot about what goes into making a pair of Justin handcrafted, made in the USA boots. Something we're very proud of. Uh, there's a lot of history, tradition, and value associated with Justin Brand. You know, we were making boots for cowboys and going up and down the Chisholm Trail. So, uh, long you know, time. We, a long time. And we take that stewardship very, very seriously, very personally. It's something we, we honor and cherish. Um, and, and I hope that you guys have a good appreciation for everything that we do here, making great quality, quality product. Well, I've learned a lot. <laughs> Definitely. It's neat to see how all this comes together. To well, make one pair of boots. This, uh, all these different pieces make a lot more sense now that we've been through the factory. And uh, I feel like we've actually earned our all access pass. It comes on each of these bent rail boots. Absolutely. We have uh, seen the whole process. You've earned your backstage pass, so pick yours up by buying your next pair of bent rail boots. If you want to find out more information, go to Justin. Bentrail.com. Find That's out more right. about the boots that we saw made today. I just want to add one more thing, and that is everything that you love about America, where we've come from, and where we are, you can still find it when you come to a factory like this to see your workers and meet your people and see the pride that they have in their product. Still a lot of good left in our country. Thanks. And today, thanks goes to Justin. Thank you. Appreciate Justin. it. Paul, thanks, Lewis. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.